are these people? One of the other stories I got this week is about a port strike. And, you know, it's really funny because I okay. had dinner. Uh, I talked to my dad. My dad used to be an importer of all things. He used to import mm. jackets from from overseas. He was heavily involved with shipping. And the, like sh like shipping containers and the cost of shipping and all that, he was very involved. So when I asked him, hey, did you hear about the East Coast port strike that may be happening? He says, no, what do you mean? And I thought that was even more interesting because he watches CNBC, like, religiously. So he's pretty right-wing and up to business, up to speed on business. And the potential of a port shutdown could have a big impact on business and on the economy. And it could be happening as soon as Tuesday or Wednesday. <laughs> what do I mean? So. Shout out to Big Mad Crab, who alerted us to this earlier in the week and said, this is potentially a big story that's developing, guys, and not many people are covering it, and you guys do labor pretty well, and this kind of fits. Um, so I started looking into it, and I asked some questions, and and his dad is, is involved. He, I think he's either a longshoreman or somewhere involved with one of the ports. So he's sitting in on some of these meetings. I'm like, what are they telling him? Are they telling him that they're going to strike? Are they telling him that they're they're really going to hold firm and actually go out on strike if the union doesn't cave? What do they want? What's going on? So on the East Coast, Maersk is one of the large container lines. They announced a an East Coast labor dispute surcharge. Jeez. So not only has shipping increased in cost since the beginning of the pandemic in a, by a tremendous amount, and it's come back down a percentage since then, but still higher than it was in 2020. Um, now, with the with the threat of a strike, they're looking to jack rates right back up. So, what this article I pulled this from a real rag from like the industry Sea Time Maritrade Sea Sea Trade Maritime News. I've never even heard of it before. But what they said was that. Container lines and logistics providers are gearing up for a strike as the U.S. MX and ILA remain at an impasse with talks on a new six-year labor contract having broken down several months ago. The ILA has pledged that its 85,000 members will go on a coast-wide strike from 1st of October if a new agreement is not reached. I love seeing talk like that. Like that's leading that could that could lead to a general strike potentially if people got on board. Cargo, mm -hmm. here's the thing, cargo on vessels bound for East Coast ports and due to arrive after the first of October will likely be left stranded on board ship until the industrial action can be resolved. Okay. Um how much are we talking? JP Morgan transportation analysts estimate that a strike could cost the economy. $5 billion a day or 6% of GDP expressed daily. That's a lot of but more than that Netanyahu? What? what? Where'd that come from? For each what? day though that the ports are shut down <laughs> that's a little late. That was earlier. Yeah. <laughs> For each day the ports are shut down, it would take roughly six days to clear the backlog. So imagine the ports are shut down for two weeks, all right? That's 86 days-ish, you know, 80-ish 80, 80 days just to clear the backlog, and then there's more backlog during this whole thing. It would be a massive mess if it were two weeks. But... The dock worker strike looks set for the 1st of October. And because of it, all of these, these lines, and it's not just Maersk, but all the other ones are also now charging another $1,500 to $3,700 per container. Think about how many containers are on a ship. Per container, they're going to get an extra couple thousand dollars for the potential of not having anyone to unload it. And it's sitting there for who knows how long. 
Unreal. I just, wow. But on top of that, I decided this morning that I wanted to look up what is corporate media saying to the public about this? Are they fear mongering? And sure enough, of course they are. Oh my God, everybody panic. And they're even telling you what you need to run out and stock up on and buy more of in anticipation of a port of an extended port strike happening. Now, my feeling and opinion is that if you're talking about literally a $5 billion a day impact to the economy, somebody's going to make sure the shit gets done quickly and maybe even in advance. I know they can get it back to the table, but somebody's got to make sure this gets done. So everybody run out and panic. As of yesterday or two days ago, Dole Fruit Company and Chiquita Fresh North America get about two thirds of all Bonan imports. Yeah, bananas. Watch for the cost of Bonans. That's right. Watch for your banana prices to start going sky high. Because if they can't unload them, the this is can. indeed a disturbing universe. Right? But also can't I can't have bananas go up. Not not my bananas. Any fruit that arrives after the what first monkey do. No. Any fruit <laughs> arriving after October 1st will be condemned to the trash can. <laughs> And all people who have invested in that business will lose a fortune. So the fruit yep. companies certainly have a lot of incentive to make this happen. Thank you, Cowboy Kitty. Thank you, John H. Yep. With the Bonan. Everyone Bonan. Loves, Everyone knows I have uh, I, I'm not a Bonan fan. So they can all sit on the dock and rot as far as I'm concerned. But drop, drop your bonans in the chat. But, bonans. But, but my my kids love bonans and my wife loves bonans. So no no more bonans yeah, for good Anna. Monkeys. It just proves Indy is a lizard person. He doesn't like bonans. I am not a lizard person, and I deny that accusation, sir. <laughs> knitted and non knitted. Exactly apparel. what a lizard person would say. So that would have affected my father imported jackets, non knitted apparel. Furniture, plywood, and pharmaceutical yep. products. Hope you're not getting looking for those Chinese drugs. And year-end holiday items, better stock up on those early, would be among the endless list of products impacted by the strike. But fear not, Costco members. China. Fear not, Costco members, because Costco and retailers have been ordering up and stocking up in anticipation of this. So, yeah. <laughs> Cowboy Kitty, Costco, see now, this is, this is how rumors start, <laughs> dude. This is how rumors start. Yeah. That's just wrong. Indy oh. has the taste buds of a four-year-old. Colin's Colin, got it right. Care Bear, come on. Colin's Ke got it know, right. Th these are just unnecessary and unwarranted attacks on my persona. I don't appreciate How dare you? How dare you? That's right. How dare you? <laughs> All right. Uh, and on top of all of that, the port owners are going to the NLRB and saying, hey, can you make sure that the that the employees, that the longshoremen come back to the table so that we can at least try to negotiate and get a deal <laughs> done before the 30th? They've had months. Uh -huh. East and Gulf Coast. Port yeah, but they're going to play the victim. Right. So, but on Thursday, they raised the stakes in negotiations, asking the NLRB to order the union back to the bargaining table. Their lawyer said in a press release, due to the ILA's mis repeated refusal to come to the table and bargain on a new master contract, <laughs> because you haven't yeah. come and increased your offer at all to bargain with. USMX filed an unfair labor right. practice with the NLRB and requested immediate injunctive relief requiring the union to resume bargaining so that we can negotiate a deal. Uh-huh. I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. Talks between employers and the ILA on a new six-year master contract covering the 25,000 union employees in container and railroad services at three dozen East Coast and Gulf Coast ports 
broke off in June over wages and benefits and the introduction of technology that would automate thumb dock side services, meaning the elimination of more jobs for automation. The ILA has called for a strike on both coasts when the current contract expires at midnight on Tuesday, and that's Gulf Coast and East Coast. The West Coast got it done mm. last year, and that's the other reason for the strike, and I've got another article talking about this, but the NLRB filing, by the way, would not affect the strike deadline. So even it's it's just a parlor game. They're just trying to build some PR here going, please, please get them back to the table. No, you haven't offered them anything more to bring them back to the table. Now, again, Common Dreams, they published a, a good article about this. They're warning the AFL-CIO, which is a big labor organization, is warning the House GOP, because, when I, again, when I asked my father about this, what do you think is going to happen? He said, oh, the governor will just get involved and shut it down. That's the first thing that he said. <laughs> he may not be wrong. No, he may not be wrong on that. <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh. So Olivia Rossane, <laughs> who is a board member at Common Dreams, publishes that the AFL-CIA warns the, high, the House GOP, don't interfere with the Longshoremen's labor battle or else. A potential, yeah. a potential strike would see between 25,000 and 50,000 workers walk off the job on Tuesday at 36 locations along 14 East and Gulf Coast port authorities, including 10 of the busiest ports in North America. Here's the thing. The union wants substantial raises to cover the cost of inflation. While West Coast port workers, again, last year won this, last year they now make a base wage of fifty four eighty five. Their East and Gulf Coast counterparts only yeah. make thirty nine dollars an hour. The ILA is also demanding better health care, and a promise not to install more automated or semi automated terminals at the ports, which of course eliminates the more union jobs. However, negotiations between the union and USMX broke down in June when the ILA said that USMX had already begun using an automated gate to allow trucks into ports, which was in violation of their current contract. And they still are doing that, by the way. Funny. So. Ugh. We're sorry. What, what's happening again is that people are expecting that the ports are going to rely on Taft-Hartley, on, on the government to impose... You know that this is national security you can't stop the ports relying on taft partly is not a winning strategy and shouldn't be usmx's expected path to resolution all right and that's the ttd and i don't remember exactly where ttd is if you look at the common dreams article it'll tell you um, yeah the biden harris administration has already stated in their own words we've never invoked Ta taft hartley to break a strike and are not considering doing so now no they just didn't allow the railroad workers they just to, threatened to go it. on strike. Right. Right. Like. And these no, they people, never stop strikes. See's list of strikes they stop. Like. And the, T okay. the TTD also adds that USMX is the one that, that are to blame for the risk of a strike. The employers, not the workers, have shirked the responsibility and punted negotiations to the 11th hour when the damage to the public and the national supply chain would be the most detrimental. All right? They knew they were doing this. Yeah. While they seek to cast blame on the frontline workers who move our supply chain, they're the ones that are at fault. They hold all the cards. They could come back to the table with a better offer at any moment. They choose not to. All right? Mm. Where else are you hearing about the port strike in independent media? Not too many places. And because of it, we don't get nope. we don't get love in the algorithm. We don't get the support that we that other larger channels get. We love them, we we appreciate them, but we don't get what they get, and we are completely user funded. We work on a value for value system here. Thank you, Steve Poikinen. Somebody asked what what's what's a permanent Poikinen? I almost I I almost spit my drink out earlier. The Pokemon. Clearly. 
a permanent Poikinen. Clearly a Pokemon. Would be if my voice was was incredibly Poikinen, Poikinen. raspy <laughs> nods that well. Poikinen, Poikinen, Poikinen. We covered that six weeks ago. <laughs> Which he told me I added. I needed to add more rasp into it. I I performed that for him live, but uh, that that was great. Uh, shout out to Steve. <laughs> he's also you part of. I want to see a Poikin in Pokemon now. He's well. You know? If there's anyone who would design it, I believe Cowboy Kitty in chat designs Pokemon characters. If I if I know my my customers, do it up. I want three evolutions. You know, it's like. Poikin and then Derek Bros, then <laughs> just, Whitney Webb. You no, know, I want to see the Whitney Webb. Right, <laughs> right. That'd be pretty good. Speaking of, you know, it's funny. The oh. independent, the uh, the independent. Who's that Pokemon? So to support <laughs> to support Pokemon uh, INN, uh, no, or just no. or just INN, that Cash App. Cash app dollar sign indie news network is the best way to do it. Co-fee.com slash indie news network. You got PayPal, you got Rumble. There's the way to sign up monthly on Substack. We also have Patreon. There's a lot of ways to support us. We've we made it easy and a lot, you know, different methods. Really appreciate the people who do. Everyone yeah. on that list, we love you and, and we really do appreciate all the support. What did I want Whoever to mention? You are, thank you. We got, a, we got a nice hookup from Carnival Hill to the PayPal this week. Um, we also got a re-sign up from James Arkazuski over on the Substack. So thank you so much. Um, really appreciate all the support. We need it all. Every dollar counts. 